It feels like ages ago that I got to make this video for the S23 Ultra. I finally get to make this video for my beloved Galaxy Z Fold. We are now running One UI 6.0. We are in the beta. Android 14 is here. First thing I want to say is this. Here's how you get in to said beta. Go into your Samsung members application. And once it loads, eventually, you are going to see at the very top of the screen, there's a banner for the One UI beta program. Select that, enroll, and after a few minutes, you should be able to install this update and you will be off and running. Once you get this thing installed, there are a few noticeable things right out of the gate. Let's take a look at our quick settings here. This is totally different, unless of course, you're familiar with the iPhone because it looks very, very similar to that. I'm kidding, it's not exactly the same, but it is extremely similar in terms of the appearance. Hopefully you're gonna like this, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but this is what it's gonna look like, so get used to it. If we jump into the camera application, I believe there are going to potentially be some changes there. There absolutely are. Look at the top of the screen, that is now a different appearance. We can quickly switch to three by four or what have you on that screen. You can maybe see a bit better what's going on now. Zoom controls over there on the side. Let's close it up and you can see what that will look like. And you can see the appearance here, very, very similar to the S23 Ultra. In fact, I believe that's pretty much exactly the same. If we jump into the settings, you should see advanced intelligence options, which will allow you to do exactly what you can see here. Speed up the taking of photos to hopefully reduce that motion blur a little bit. So far with the 23 Ultra, I'm not really seeing a huge difference, but it's there if you do want to try that. If we jump into our settings, you will now see a battery section there. I'm pretty sure that's new, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is now a battery section right here, easily accessible. Potentially some interesting things here like background usage limitation, wireless power sharing, charging settings, maybe a little bit more uh, easy to access, a little bit easier to access would be the correct way to say that. If we jump into our music player, let's get something playing. Let's take a look at the widget here. I believe that is a very different look to that widget. I think that that actually looks quite nice. It kind of fits the uh, aesthetic of the rest of the device very well. Back on my home screen, perhaps you can see this widget here, which you can customize so that whenever you click it, it takes you directly into your camera and into a specific camera mode, which you can see there was portrait mode. So let's say I'm off portrait mode. Let's go to just regular photo. When I click that, I'm going to be back into portrait mode. If you're someone that needs to take pictures very quickly and you like a particular setup, that's going to be useful to you. If we jump into the gallery application, we have rearranged the icons a little bit. If we go into the editing function, this also has been updated, maybe larger touch targets, easier to see what you're doing. If you jump into the gallery apps video player, some big changes here. They've actually moved the controls onto the video, which I don't necessarily love, but whatever, it's there. And they've also changed these controls down here below. You can kind of have it in a floating window now, which I think is not necessarily new, but the placement of the buttons down here, that has definitely changed. If we jump into our lock screen settings, we now actually have the ability to move this clock around a little bit more than before. I think that these options down here are consistent. I don't think any of these are new, but you can at least sort of move it around. Can you make it bigger? Nope, just moving it around. If you jump into device care and scroll down, you'll see this auto optimization section. And you'll see they've added this auto restart option where you can have your phone restart when performance issues are detected or do that on a schedule. This is potentially kind of interesting because we tell people all the time, if your phone's running funny, try rebooting it. Well, this will just kind of do that for you. Back in device care, this is also where you're going to see your performance profile now. I always leave mine on light because it's more than powerful enough and this does save me some additional battery. That's not new, but it is in a new place, I believe. Now, this is one I can't necessarily speak to too much and you're probably not gonna be able to tell this from a video, but apparently the animations are a little bit smoother I don't know, you see these people on Twitter just opening and closing apps as quickly as they can and it drives me crazy. They say it's supposed to be better, smoother, whatever. You can be the judge of that. Looks like some pretty decent stuff overall. And if the experiences of people running pixels like the Pixel Fold or even some older pixels, if those experiences mean anything, 
It's possible that we could also see a fairly significant improvement to the battery life as well, but time is going to be the telling factor on that one. Unfortunately, I can't really tell you I'm going to be like daily driving that Z Fold again because I just have too many other things to be doing right now. So please let me know in the comments what your experience is because I would love to hear that from you guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay noted.